now. That's one of my favorite songs. Why should we be filled with doubt and worry indeed when we know that God is all there is? And in that consciousness, please help me to welcome our speaker this morning, practitioner Jennifer Livingston. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, thank you for that warm welcome. Good morning, friends. Let me also add my own words of welcome to all of you for this morning's service, and very especially to those of you who may be joining us for the first time online. As always, it is truly an honor to share with you from the podium on a Sunday morning in whatever capacity I'm assigned to do. And I'd also like to just extend my appreciation to Carol again for setting the stage for this morning's service. Thank you, Carol. Now, friends, August is a special month as we observed Emancipation Day at the start when Reverend Ann Shand, our assistant minister here at the temple, gave an inspiring talk on freedom. And one of the things she said was, and I quote, our freedom lies in our inner awareness of who we are and what we are part of, end quote. Right after Emancipation Day, we celebrated Jamaica's 59th year of independence, marking how far we have come as a nation. And during this period, we saw the conclusion of the staging of the 32nd Olympiad in Tokyo, and what an Olympics that was. We will talk some more about that later. But August is also particularly special for me as I celebrated my birthday four days ago. And it was an opportunity, um, time for me to reflect on life, you know, looking back on my experiences and all of which have brought me to this point and have made me who I am. This morning, I would like to, to spend some time examining this matter of our inner awareness, that which we refer to as consciousness. And for myself, I can boldly declare that truly life is consciousness. This is also the title of my talk, and it is the title of a book by Emmett Fox, Irish New Thought, spiritual leader from the early 20th century, and it is based on a lecture he had given to the Unity School of Christianity in 1936. And I want to begin with a quote from that lecture which states, the explanation of all your problems, the explanation of your difficulties, and the explanation of your triumph in life boils down to this. Life is a state of consciousness. That is the beginning and the end." End quote. Now, how did I come to this declaration for myself? As I looked back on some of my experiences, I can recall in particular a trip I had taken a few years back, having gone to a company convention in Spain and decided to stay over a few extra days to visit Italy. I knew no one in Italy. I was traveling by myself, and yet I had the most fantastic time and met the most wonderful people, for whom English is not their first language to begin with, while yours truly spoke absolutely no Italian. But they were so helpful and willing to assist that something in me knew that we were communicating with each other on another level the level of consciousness. And more recently, I have seen numerous opportunities open for me once I embody the awareness of that which I desire. So what is this consciousness to which I'm referring? Consciousness refers to awareness, the awareness that there is an inner presence in everyone and everything. That presence is God. And as incarnations of God, the living spirit, 
it lives and breathes through us all. When we recognize this spirit, it responds to us and reaches out to commune with the spirit in everyone and everything we contact. My friends, spiritual awareness is important in the use of the law of life, for the law is a servant of the spirit. In our Science of Mind textbook, our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, states, and I quote, the spirit is not something apart from matter, so-called, but is something working through matter, the potential possibility of what we call the highest and the lowest is inherent in everything. They are not different things, end quote. So we may look at life from different mental depths or heights, but from whatever level we look, what we see comes back to us by an invariable law of attraction. The law of attraction, as stated in our Science of Mind textbook, begins with our thoughts. It is our thoughts that will attract to us that which we first mentally embody. Author Emmett Fox also has a book called Mental Equivalent, which we just concluded in our online classes here at the temple. And in it, he too speaks to us building a mental equivalent of the thing we desire. But back to our Science of Mind textbook. It goes on to explain that each of us is surrounded by a thought atmosphere. And it is from this that we determine that which comes into our experience. Dr. Holmes goes on to state, everyone automatically attracts to himself just what he is, and we may set it down that wherever we are, however intolerable the situation may be, we are just where we belong. There is no power in the universe but ourselves that can free us. End of that quote. This is the principle that we attract that to which our thought is attuned. In so doing, we must first mentally embody the good we seek and have it become part of our inner understanding. This consciousness of good is made manifest through our use of the law of attraction. However, the universe can only give us what we take. And since our taking is a thing of consciousness, the universe can only give us what we are aware of and are open and ready to receive. This takes me back to the Olympics. And one of my best moments was the first and third place finishes in the men's 110 meter hurdles, won by Hansel Parchment. Two things stood out for me. The first was that I heard a post-race interview with the American Grant Holloway, who was the favorite to win. And he said, when Hansel Parchment won bronze, back in 2012 at the Olympics, he was still in high school. And he admired him being a black man and a hurdler, which he wanted to become. Then he mentioned that through the heats and semifinals, Parchment kept saying to him, I am coming, I am coming, I am coming. He had no idea what that meant. But if you had joined us last week or were in the sanctuary then, you would have heard practitioner Sandra Cooper share about his Instagram posting that went viral. And that is the second thing that stood out for me, and it bears repeating. Because in it, Parchment shared that he almost didn't make it to the semifinals, having gotten on the wrong bus from the Olympics Village and ended up at the aquatic center. It hadn't, if it hadn't been for the kindness of a volunteer who gave him money to take a taxi, he would not have made it in time to the warm-ups for the semifinals. So you see, in all of this, what is important about these two instances is that he had a consciousness of what it was he wanted to achieve. And that awareness al allowed him to recognize that he was not in the right place. But having set the intention, 
I am coming, I am coming, I am coming. The indwelling presence and power guided him to the right person who could assist him to get to the athletic stadium. He was really ready to receive. And if you haven't seen this Instagram post, you should check it out. My friends, are you ready to receive? This brings us to our first tool that we can use for the purpose of bringing our consciousness to a higher level of spiritual awareness and acceptance through the use of our spiritual mind healing treatment or affirmative prayer. The phrase, are you ready to receive, embodies the five step of treatment, steps of treatment. This simple acronym is easy for us to recall this step, whether we are a beginner or seasoned practitioner in the use of affirmative prayers. And if you want to learn more about this method of prayer, do join one of our classes here at the temple. We have cl classes going on. Right now, there is a series in place, and we also have beginning again in September. So there you can learn how to use this method of prayer. But while we know how effective our affirmative prayers can be, unless we change our state of consciousness, we will not change our condition. In fact, every area of our life reflects our state of consciousness. And so, if you are in a job that you like or you do not like, that is as a result of your state of consciousness. Our bodies, our bank accounts, our homes, our communities, everything that we have, do, or our being is in accord with our consciousness. It has been observed, for example, that in the matter of healing, you may find it more challenging to get a permanent healing unless you have a consciousness of health. You see, we may treat for the healing of one illness and no sooner than we are over this, then another illness appears. But we may get over that and then on to the next. Without fully embodying a consciousness of health, you are bound to repeat the experience. The same is true if you find you have persons in your life who you do not like, and I'm sure none of us here have this problem. <laughs> Emmett Fox's advice to us is that we take a four by five card and we write the following words on it. Like attracts like. It is our consciousness that brought them into our experience something for us to think about. So when we want to try to work on the outer things without a change on the inner, it can bring no permanent change. In fact, Emmett Fox shares the following story in his lecture. In the old days of cowboys and Indians in the Midwest, when movies first came to town, these were shown in the square on a huge white screen with the projector rolling. And you would have seen this if you have watched the old Western movies. In one such scene, where the villain was holding the damsel in distress by the throat, as if to strangle her, a cowboy in the audience took out his pistol and fired a shot at the screen. But that didn't rescue the damsel or stop the show. It only resulted in a hole in the screen. If the cowboy really wanted to stop the movie, he should have fired at the projector. <laughs> My friends, what picture are you seeing on the screen of your life that you do not like? We can change the real by changing our consciousness. This also reminds me of what our founding minister, Dr. Elmo Lundsten, always said. If our hair is messed up when we look in the mirror, it is no point in combing the reflection that we see. We must comb the hair if we want a different reflection. This brings us to some of the other tools we can use in helping to change our consciousness. 
and rise above our challenges. And one other such tool is affirmations. We can repeat some positive affirmation um, when we find ourselves face to face with any negative situations. And here are a few examples. And I'll say them once. And while it's where you are online, tuned in, you can repeat after me. So here goes. God in me is my sufficiency. I am surrounded by the presence of God and all is well in my world. So let me repeat. God in me is my sufficiency. I am surrounded by the presence of God and all is well in my world. And indeed, so it is. Next, we should do our daily spiritual practice of meditation and quiet contemplation. It also helps to bring about a change in our consciousness. And if you do not know how to meditate, please call the office for an appointment to learn how to do so. And then you can also do some reading of the Bible or any other inspirational literature or books that we have available to us. Yes, daily reading of the Bible also helps us with changing our consciousness as we learn the truths of life which sets us free. And one such truth is found in John chapter 1 and verses 1 to 2. In the King James Version we read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God end of that reading. Another great creative word that we encountered in the Bible is in Deuteronomy when Moses was being given the commandments and that is the I am. It is the name of God. It is the key to life and it is with us all the time. And friends, it is the great secret which one can unlock when we know the power of the I am. Dr. Holmes, in an article in the Science of Mind magazine of June 2021, titled The Power of the I Am Presence, states, and I quote, the I Am is a universal spirit responding to us, the breath of our breath, the identity of our person, the integrity of our own soul, I, the immortality of our spirit, end quote. Whatever follows our I am determines what the universe will bestow upon us. We must be mindful, therefore, of how we use our I am consciousness and our I am statements as we are writing blank checks on the universe for future use. So make sure you are writing that which will heal, uplift, inspire, prosper, and bless. Remember, no one can say, I am for you. We build our consciousness with our I am statements, and no one can do it for us. Emmett Fox also points out in this lecture that many persons come to him and they say they spend several hours, hours every morning working on building their consciousness through meditation and quiet contemplation. But he reminds us, that it is not the hour that is spent that determines our consciousness, but what it is that we continue to maintain and sustain throughout our day that is in keeping with building this uplifted consciousness. So my friends, we cannot have just finished our meditation and get on the road heading to the office or wherever and in traffic, and when we get cut off by the next taxi man who drives irresponsibly, we totally lose it. Or we go in to our offices and we don't want to deal with the tiresome co-workers, so we, av uh, we avoid them at all costs. It is for this reason that Joel Goldsmith, in his book, The Heart of Mysticism, recommends that we take frequent breaks throughout the day to go within for periods of silence and quiet communion. It is worthwhile for us to consider putting this into practice. 
And my friends, I'd like to invite you to start off by doing so every day this week. You see, since we're trying to work on outer things without a change on the inner will bring no permanent change, it is important for us to go into the silence periodically. And we have an opportune time to do that this week. We are at home for three days consecutively. My friends, as I stated earlier at the outset, but worthwhile repeating, we are always either attracting or repelling in accordance with our mental attitudes, just as we are either identifying ourselves with lack or with abundance, with friendship, or with loneliness, we cannot keep from attracting into our experience that which is in accord with our states of consciousness. The law of attraction or repulsion works automatically and will always reflect back to us that which we believe to be true about ourselves. Our life is a mirror and, it ref and its reflection bears all the forms of our own acceptance. How careful then we each must be in guarding our thoughts and our beliefs. It does not mean that we are not aware of what happens in the world around us, but we will go about our affairs doing things in accordance with our higher consciousness. And we will see the results of outpictured in our world as joy, peace, prosperity, love, and harmony. In closing, as I did in the beginning, I do so with a quote from Emmett Fox, Life is Consciousness. And in it, he states, when you want to solve your problems or change your life, you can see at once that the only way to change is to change your consciousness, end quote. Here endeth the lesson, now begins the practice. Namaste.